Hello, welcome to another Chemistry 111 tutorial. A few of you have been asking for a little bit more help in using Excel for laboratory data, and I'll try to include some of the tips that I know, a little bit of formula writing, some very, very simple um, skills here. If you want more in-depth uh, tutorials, there's a million different tutorials out there for Excel, so feel free to shop around and find a good one. Uh, for this one, again, I'm just going to kind of go over some points that I think are helpful and some things that will help you prevent from uh, losing points on your laboratory. So let's go ahead and dive right in. What we're going to do is set up a simple data table from some uh, sample lab data that I, I took from uh, Tuesday lab section. Uh, thanks to Dr. Taylor for that. And um, also how to transfer that data into a, a simple scatter plot with both a linear and a nonlinear trend line. So let's dive right in. First thing I do uh, when I'm working with Excel, um, just due to power outages or someone kicking the cord and, um, you know, losing your data. How do you prevent that? First thing you do is save your work, save it often. Um, so just a little word to the wise there. So before you, you start throwing data in and start doing calculations, I want you to take a step back and always set up uh, a sheet, a worksheet here. And if you look down at the bottom right, you can name that. So here we'll have, um, I don't know, we can call it uh, red 40 data. And if you want to, you can make two or three different worksheets, right? You can see here where you can have a bunch of different sheets. You can delete them if you don't need them, but they often help you uh, organize data. And it's it's very helpful sometimes if you want to, you know, write a, a spreadsheet that can say calculate 95% um, CIs. You can each each week that you do that, you can have a different uh, worksheet and have the whole semester in one file. So that's very helpful. Um, the other thing to do is pretend, you know, like someone's gonna look at this later on and not know what you intended to mean and so I typically write maybe more than I should but I like to put titles and labels and headings and things so that if I give this to a colleague or a student they can look at it and kind of figure out what I meant uh, not just have a bunch of different columns that are either labeled or or have shorthand where I can't make heads or tails of it so uh, for this one we're gonna use some of the data that we you, we collected uh, last week in week one of the the light analysis of red 40 with Beer's Law and so um, go ahead and give it a title right um, it's not a terrible thing to um, tell people what you're doing when you got a file here um, and we're looking at dye and beverages right that's the main idea here and there you go and, and then the other thing I like to do is I like to put a date right so if we were in lab last week right it would have been somewhere between the 18th and the um, the 20th or so, so let's go ahead and put that in. All right, there we go, it's not there, quite there. Yet. And now we're, we're off to the races. And so the first thing we had to do was come up with a table of data for our uh, solution dilutions. And so let's go ahead and these were for our standard calibration curve. So we'll, curve, so we'll have our standard uh, solution uh, preparation, right? And I'll go ahead and I bold that I like to just draw people's attention to those and let's go ahead and set up our columns if you remember from the lab we had um, solution um, what, what what solution was it um, in this case we had right, we had a stock solution so let's go ahead and put that in there we had a uh, dilution number one we and we also had dilution two three and four and you can enter those in or if you want to you can highlight this cell and it's important for those that haven't used Excel a whole lot you have a cell here a is the column B you have letters across the top numbers down on the rows and so this would be a nine just if you haven't known that before and you could type these in I, I actually like the little feature here in Excel where you can drag this bottom right corner down in and look at that it'll label these for you one through four save you a little bit of time which is which is pretty nice and so solution is going to be our our title here and so um, and actually I'm going to give myself a little bit more room and we'll see why here um, another good tip here if you want to move a set of cells don't click this one down here because that'll you know if you, if you want to drag this down it would give us a bunch more and repeat uh, the titles but we just want to move this whole group so highlight them all and you get this little cross uh, with the arrows and you can drag things down and that's that's very helpful I'm gonna go ahead and drag this down to to row 10 just so that when we do some other columns I have more room and so here we're gonna say okay well the next thing we had was volume um, you know volume of concentrated solution or volume of the I'm just gonna call it previous solution um, used so that was the solution and we need to put a unit there 
and there we go and the next thing I'm gonna do the column is total volume right so that's the total volume perhaps after dilution right that's important because it's also in milliliters and then finally we have the final concentration of that solution uh, concentration of what that's concentration of red 40 and that's in molarity which we really haven't covered yet but that's going to be in moles per liter and you'll notice we've got all this kind of um, unformatted now so I'd like to go back and clean it up my uh, column headings I like to um, you know it's up to you some people like to justify them on the one side some people like to center them I'm gonna center mine I'm actually gonna go ahead and bold them helps me see them a little bit better and this this column here is kinda of bleeding over so a couple ways you can do it you can go here and you could move and make the columns bigger or wider and or more narrow or you can just double click it and it will auto scale it for you so that everything has a, a nice spacing and you can adjust it to you. If you hold it down, you can see the, the actual number of pixels. You can make it a even number or a rounded number if it makes you happy. And so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this guy down to center it a little bit better. But there we go, there are my four columns. And if you remember, we had our stock solution. So uh, the stock solution just came to us in a bottle, right? So we didn't use any solution to make that one. So this is really not applicable um, and then the total volume after dilution, we did not dilute that, so I'm going to just say not applicable. And I don't want these to be uh, bold, so I'm going to unbold them. And then um, the concentration of the stock solution was provided, and that was 4.02 um, times 10 to negative fifth moles per liter. But uh, Excel uses the E terminology here, the E, e symbology, to go 10 uh, powers of 10 is E uh, to the negative fifth right and so there you go it'll automatically put that into scientific notation if it doesn't you can always right click a cell and format that cell and you can put it into a variety of different um, formats here and you can you know everything from currency to date to all kinds of fun things number and scientific are the ones I typically use and you control for the number of decimal places here or if you wish you can actually go over uh, to this menu item here and you can change the number of decimal places and this is really important for you guys because um, controlling the correct number of sig figs displayed is really important and it's your responsibility when you're using you're using Excel uh, to, to be um, you know to be honest in the number of sig figs you have don't you know I don't want to see something like uh, like that which often happens when people are not careful because that's that's not an ethical uh, display of what your precision is, right? We don't we don't lie here. We we tell people our limitations by telling people the precision we're operating at. And I believe the bottle had three sig figs, so we're gonna stick with that for right now. So there you go. Now, here we took um, 25 mils of the stock solution, right? We took 25 milliliters using the volumetric pipette, and we put it into a 50 mil. Um, volumetric flask and so the total volume in that one was 50 and that's going to give us a new concentration and I'm going to go ahead and center those and here we know that those those pieces of volumetric glass are, are accurate or sorry precise to the um, hundreds place so we can go ahead and add uh, our digits there and make it accurate or accurately represented rather to what the precision was and if you want to you can do the calculations and We'll talk about this later in the semester, but if you think about what's going on, we took this concentration and we did a one-to-one -one of the stock solution and water, so we diluted it by a factor of of one-to-one, -one, so that means we diluted it by half. And if you want to, you can write the formula. You can say, well, um, whenever you want to write a formula, you highlight the cell you want it to be in and you hit equals, and that will begin your formula. And you can reference other cells, so I'm going to reference the cell by clicking the one above it. That was our stock solution and I'm gonna say divide by two and you can see the formula up here in the the bar here the display bar and then you hit enter and it will compute and so you can see that um, it's it's done that and and you can always check your formula double check it triple check it make sure your formula is correct because you need to make sure you have confidence in the calculation that you're assigning there remember Excel is only going to be good uh, as the the data and the formula that you write now if you think about it, for each subsequent dilution, we always use the 25 mil pipette. So we can just scroll that down and, and use the same one. And then we always use a 50 mil uh, volumetric flask. So there you go. And then finally, we can do the same thing. Now you can drag it manually, or if you want it to match the number of rows adjacent to it, you can just double click 
and it will do it automatically. That's pretty snazzy. And what I do here typically for numerical data, you can either center it or justify it however you like. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, justify it. Um, it looks kind of nice that way to me, but whatever works for you is fine. All right, so we've got our nice uh, table of data here. I like to partition off my tables so that they are relatively self-contained. So what I typically do is go to the data, um, and you can go up here to borders. and play. You don't have to do this. This is more of a style thing that I like to do. I like to put borders on there. So if I'm reading across or reading down, I don't get offset and make a, a reading mistake. And then for the whole table, I like to go ahead and try to put a bolder uh, border and so mm, that's just my preference but you can do whatever you like so there's a very simple data table um, with some very simple formulas now let's try something a little bit more difficult here let's go ahead and um, take a look at our red 40 die calibration uh, curve uh, data that we got from our instrument right the 3d printed instru instrument we used in class so I'm going to type here red 40 uh, calibration uh, curve data Oops, spell right and then um, that's my heading for this new data table. I'm going to go ahead, and since this is a new one, I'm going to bold, italicize it. You don't have to do that, whatever you like. Um, here I'm going to say this is solution number, and we'll have our same values here. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down a little bit, give me more room. I'm going to say we have our stock, and then we had dilution one, and I think we went down to dilution four. Oops, one too many. Dilute that <laughs> delete that last one rather. Now you could put in your, you know, your your unknowns at this point, but I I typically keep them separate because even though they were in the same data table that we wrote down in the lab notebook, that those two data points for the cherry um, seven up diet seven up and the Powerade they're not going to be included uh, in our our standard calibration curve. So I'm going to keep those separate for now. Um, we got that and then our next column of data would be the concentration and you might ask well wait a minute that's not the same as in our lab notebook well in this second week of the lab we're actually going to need to take this concentration data and plot it against some data that you acquired last week so I'm going to go ahead and just preempt that and, and dump this column here so there are a couple ways I can do it right I could type it all over again or if you just highlight this and do a control C um, and then hopefully if I put this in the right spot you do a control V and it will copy that data right on down which is very very helpful and then you're gonna be annoyed because it's got borders no big deal we can get rid of those borders and we can say no borders and boom there you go I'll go ahead and um, while I'm over here center that solution column heading and then we've got a various uh, you know we've got volts here right and that was volts for dark right our little clay dark uh, uh, sample we've got volts for our reference right that was just uh, our DI water and then we've got volts for an actual sample um, I like to go ahead and just put volts because it's really important to me to understand that the instrument is actually giving us volts and then we had what percent T for percent transmittance and then um, absorbance right you can call it ABS or you can call it A I'll just do it ABS uh, there we go we can take all these we can bold them all we can center them if we want and we're good to go. Um, I'll go ahead and italicize these just because I like to do that. Alright, so now what you do is you just quite literally um, copy your lab data into here, right? And so uh, it was important that you took individual values and the laboratory data set I see it shows that all of these were very constant, didn't really move a whole lot, and then the V reference it moved a little bit but not a whole lot I mean this is moving a bit in the the last digit there um, let's see 6.93 and again don't enter what I'm entering enter your actual data that's really important and I'm going to continue entering in this data be really careful here it is very very easy and it's happened to me before you don't want to make any transcription uh, errors because if you're um, like me and sometimes you have a little bit of um, I don't know I've, I've not been formally diagnosed with dyslexia but sometimes I uh, transpose numbers and reverse them when I write things down and, and that can cause problems when you're um, putting data in like this you'll notice here that we have this one digit right this I entered in I'll do it again 6.30 and the 3 goes away Oh, that's kind of annoying but you can go ahead up here and 
and put that in manually. And so go ahead and just double check your data before you start doing a whole bunch of calculations and make sure you're good to go. And so um, what you can do now is you can begin to say, okay, well, I've got my data. It looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and clean it up a little bit here and justify it that way. It's, again, just preference. You can do whatever you like. And then we need to actually write um, the formula and the formula is given to you to calculate percent transmittance right so we're gonna uh, and compare this to the the one that's in the lab notebook it's given to you, you don't have to memorize it so I'm gonna write up a, write up a formula here and basically we're looking at um, the value the percentage of light that transmits through the sample to reach the detector right and so we're gonna have two quantities um, and I'm gonna go ahead and do uh, parenthetical here and I'm gonna say okay I'm gonna look at my the amount of light that um, gets uh, through to the detector, which would be my V sample. And then remember that I always have to subtract what? I have to always subtract the V dark. And that's really important. And I'll close that parenthetical. And I'm going to divide now and open a new parenthetical. And I'm going to say, well, this time I'm going to take my reference, which would be the 100% of light, right? The all the light that went through um, the colorless DI water versus the light that, remember, um, went through the solution. So we want to get a ratio here of what went through versus what was possible to go through. And so here's the value here. And then again, we always have to subtract out that V dark, so we select that one again. And that gives us transmittance. If we want percent transmittance, we have to multiply by 100. So we use the little, little star times 100, and if we get it just right, boom. Uh, that looks about right, 17. Don't worry, you don't need to know that, but this is unacceptable, right? We cannot have this many digits. It's not an honest representation of the precision of our data. Uh, since we have uh, three sig figs here, three here, I'm going to go ahead and knock this down uh, to three. And if I've done that right, I can double click to match the number of columns uh, adjacent to it. Boom, there we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and move that over. There's our percent T, right? It's, that's pretty, pretty cool. And darn it, I, I did not go quite far enough. And so if you catch a mistake, that that's, should be three sig figs. I just talked about that. There we go. That looks better. And then uh, we want to look at absorbance, right? Well, absorbance is pretty easy to calculate. We'll start a new formula. Absorbance is equal to 2 minus. And here we'll enter some uh, new function that you haven't seen before, probably. Is, is We'll use log base 10. And you can go look it up or just type it. And I'm going to open a parenthetical. And I'm going to select this value here. I'm going to close that parenthetical. And boom. And wow, look at that. That's a, that's a lot of mess. Uh, we can double click and bring it down. Here you see it's, it's way too many um, digits after that. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring it down here. Um, you can keep three if that makes you happy. Um, there we go. Now. Um, if you look at that, that's probably going a little bit far, but um, we'll just leave that there for right now. But there you go. We've got all of our data here, and um, I'm going to go ahead and just for my own preference, uh, justify uh, these all like that, and then I'm going to put some borders around them, and then I'm going to tie off this whole data table with a big old thick outside border, and there you go. Um, and so that was very simple, um, not too difficult to do. Now what we can do is we can begin to graphically uh, derive some representations of this data, You know, actually see what the calibration curve looks like. And so what I'm going to do now, next is develop a very simple uh, scatter plot. I'm going to select my concentrations, which will be my x-axis, right? That's my independent variable. And then first I'm going to plot percent %t. Uh, which will be my dependent or my y-axis uh, value. Now, you want to be careful not to select text while you're doing this. You just want to select the numbers. And then you want to go up here to insert, and you want to grab a good old scatter plot. Please don't connect the lines. We're not doing dot to dots. Uh, you do not display scientific data with, with connect connections like that. That's, that's not good. Uh, what you want to do is show us the data, and then it's our job to select a mathematical function or a mathematical formula to uh, fit that data. You don't just automatically connect the dots. That's, that's a bad trap to fall into. So there we go. Um, you look at this, we should put a, a title into it, right? And that's always important. Label it. So we'll put red 40 calibration curve. And we can label a little bit more. And we can say we got percent %t versus concentration. I'm going to go ahead and put some units on that. Um, 
hopefully that looks pretty good. Um, I don't know why, I don't like this gray it's using. I actually want to go ahead and just uh, change that. I'm going to bold it since it's the title. Same thing for my axes. I like to have them bolded and the axes can be a little bit larger, you know, maybe about 11. Uh, we'll clean this up in a minute because it's really cluttered and I don't like it very much when it's all cluttered like that. The other thing you'll notice, it's missing the axes labels. There are a couple different ways you can do that. You can double click the plot and you get all the uh, formatting up here where you can change things. But if you use, click this little square, this little chart elements tab, it's really helpful to, to just add those in. So we got our titles there. So let's go ahead and just dive right in and uh, click these in. So this will be, um, this is our red 40 concentration and moles per liter, right? Um, I'll go ahead and write that out. And then over here, we're going to have what this is going to be our uh, percent transmittance, right? There we go. Um, let's go ahead and uh, make these a little bit more substantial. I usually like about 12 point font for my axes labels just because it's nice to actually be able to read them. Um, you can see here we've got some. Um, values that are um, pretty easy to read. Uh, you can see that um, the only thing I don't like is maybe this This is getting a l I, I know we have three sig figs in our percent %t, but for some reason I just don't like that spacing. So what you can do is you can go over here to double click the axes and you've got a bunch of different options here, but you can, you know, let's say we're going to have a maximum of, I don't know, say you wanted to change that or change that a minimum you could type a number in I'll do it just to show you although we're not going to keep it that way but you can change all kinds of things you have the power to really master this and, and do whatever you want I will change some of the units though the major units fine I like where my spacing is for these guys but I'm going to go ahead and do my minors at 10 and then I'll show you what that does in a minute if you scroll down here you can actually look at your tick marks and I like to put them on the outside because it helps me estimate and you see now where our, our tick marks are there. Um, in terms of uh, labels, you can change those next to the axis or put them wherever you like. And then finally, um, I'm going to display this as a number. And I'm going to go ahead and cleave off that, that decimal place just because it looks a little bit more um, pleasing to the eye as an estimate. And there you go. The last thing I might do is um, change the color. So while you double click that, you can go over here uh, to fill or the line. Um, the line here, I don't like that light gray. I want a, a nice dark, and you can actually change the weight of that. So one point's about what I like, but you can pick whatever you like. Over here, I'm going to say uh, I want to see my um, my tick values here. I'm going to go ahead and leave the axes alone there. Um, you can change it if you wish. Um, the outside looks good. Uh, labels are fine there. I'm not too worried about it. And then finally. Um, I'm going to go ahead and change the color. I don't like that gray again. I'm going to do that up the, the width to a, a half. So there you go. Um, some people like the grid, right? If you don't like the grid lines, you can take it out. Uh, sometimes I like to include the, the grid lines there, but this time I'll, I'll leave it out. And then sometimes it'll automatically give you this legend. Since we only have one data series, I'm just going to go ahead and take that out. It's not really necessary. So there you go. Um, simple little plot. If you want to, you can change the, the series points and things like that by changing the colors. Uh, the marker there, you can change to, you know, whatever color you want. In fact, um, you know, uh, we can pick a nice little uh, Wabash red there if we want to. Or, Well, that's going to be weird when we, yeah, so be it. There we go. It looks nice. Good enough. I think we still got a blue circle there, but uh, so be it. Okay, so now what you can do is you can insert a trend line. You can do it one of two ways. You can go in and um, you know do the um, chart elements, and there you can get that trend line. But that's usually only for a linear trend. Um, what I'm going to do is go ahead and add trend line manually. So what I did here was I right click a data point. It doesn't matter which one you click. Um, let me unclick over there. Right click, add trend line. We see the linear plot probably not going to be the best uh, representation of our data, but let's check it out. So always hit uh, display equation, display R squared. You want that there. You probably want it to be darker. You probably want it to be bold and you probably want it to be about 11 point font so you can actually read it. The R squared is actually a measure of how well that that function fits your data and 0.92 is, is really not acceptable. You can tell this is clearly not a line. 
Um, so what we'll do instead is we'll go over here and uh, right click format trend line and let's let's go ahead and grab an exponential there you go that looks much much better and you see how it hits the data and then we get we jump up to about 0 0.995 996 or so so there we go I'm happy with that um, looks pretty good um, now remember when you print these on your um, for your lab notebooks you'll definitely want to print them large enough so here's a trick for printing if you want to print the whole page with the worksheet the whole worksheet with the data tables and everything you can just uh, go ahead and print and you can scale it down right you could go here and um, if you want to print you can scroll down here to the scaling options and shrink it all to fit uh, one page which is fine but and then you might have to change you know um, you know you might want to change it to landscape so you can fit more there and that's that's one way you could do it but I'd actually prefer if you go back if we just want to print this plot click on the plot and go down here to print and you'll notice that it will scale this plot to almost a full size sheet of paper which is wonderful so a couple things you want to check for you want to check for axes labels you want to check for title you want your trend line you want your data with the um, actual trend line there and then finally you want to make sure that you can read it and is your plot taking up the majority of the plot area because sometimes I see some guys will have a plot that's maybe just right here and that's really a waste of space you want that plot to take up the vast majority of that plot area so I'll go back and there you go so there's the there's the first part of the the plot um, plotting exercise so your first plot of two so the last one let's do the same thing oh, oh one more thing you can go over here right and you can uh, change if you want to when you click a plot the data that goes into that plot you can actually change you know you can take data out you can put data back in and it's it's very useful that way so there you go all right enough about that one so we're gonna do our our next plot which is uh, concentration and absorbance so we'll grab that one like same thing here we're gonna go to uh, scatter plot and here you go you see that uh, we're gonna go ahead and I'll cheat a little bit I'll go up here and uh, grab all this lettering when I come down here I can just cut and paste in this case we're gonna do uh, absorbance right um, you can abbreviate it that way if you want to. Again, I want to use that uh, real black color um, over here. Oh, let's go ahead and just change these. What was the font I used up here? I used 12. Let's match it so we're consistent. Um, I might do another video later on when I show you how we can um, save templates and uh, recall them for a little bit um, quicker formatting, but for right now, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my grid lines here and let's see oh, I need to add my um, axis titles that's really important so over here we're gonna have um, absorbance right and down here we're gonna have I can just go ahead and copy this as needed and bring it back down here do a cut and paste right cut and paste for windows right all this is on windows obviously I apologize to the Mac users um, what do we have here we had font size of 12 what did it give me here oh 18 let me pull that down that's weird uh, bold it and go back to, to black there alright that looks pretty decent um, let's see get that one there go back to black make it a little bit larger alright looks good um, one thing I might do make that the correct size there's 12 um, that looks good. I think I will go ahead and uh, adjust the axis labels here. Um, I want to have uh, my minor axes at, uh, let's see, why don't we do, oh, I don't know, um, we'll put it at one, right? That looks all right. We can look at our tick marks and go down outside. There, that looks pretty good. Um, I don't want to show so much of the number there I think I'll break this down to about um, how about two decimal places now I'm not changing my data I'm just changing the appearance of you know the the graph here I'm not uh, changing the data that's locked into my um, data table there which Excel knows and then over here I'm going to go ahead and grab uh, tick marks and let's do major tick marks on this one like the one above it I will change the color pretty simple there bump up the thickness 
and that looks pretty good, right? Um, one thing that maybe bothers me is the size of the the titles aren't quite the same. There we go. That looks a little bit better. I like consistency in my plots. I hope um, you do too. And, and I should probably check my spelling, right? That's that's not good. If I can spell absorbance, right? There we go. Sometimes I I'm too much of a hurry up. Absorbance looks good. Red 40 concentration. And now let's go ahead and add a trend line. For this one, uh, I think a linear will do quite nicely. But let's confirm. And um, we should also uh, look at that. There we go. 0.996. And you can imagine, because of the fact that these two are derivative of each other, the absorbance is com coming from the percent t. And so that data, once it's lin uh, formatted to a linear direct proportion, looks pretty good. And so here we can we can determine our sensitivity, which is about 18.6. That you know, 18. 1,600, which is really good. I think the literature value is about 21, so not bad for our little 3D printed instrument. Um, I think, uh, what else? So we got our uh, y-intercept here, which if you think about it, at zero concentration, we should have zero absorbance, so that's pretty good. Um, why is this one looking a little bit weird to me? I think I made that too large. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit annoying. Let's crank that down a bit. Yeah, that way it's not so cartoonish. Um, so anyway, that's a reasonable plot again to get full credit um, please make sure I didn't do this but save your data along the way uh, it'll avoid heartache later on um, but overall that's that's really a simple introduction to, to how you how you do this and it will serve you all semester long it'll serve you into future classes and I hope you, you've learned something new if you haven't then um, you know sorry to burn 30 minutes of your time but I hope uh, hope you got something out of this so um, See you in lab. Have a good weekend and talk to you later.